It's a surreal thing, surreal. I've never been through anything like it. I just arrived in North Korea, the most closed country in the world. Here there is no internet, no Hollywood movie. No one knows what a social network is. I spent months reading and researching about this country, and I suggest you do the same, whether you come here or not. I also want to make it clear that this is not a video about politics. I'm just a traveler with a cell phone who decided to come here and show you everything I saw, and everything they allowed me to see, to speak of North Korea to me is to speak of a totally obscure place. I always imagined a country all grey, dangerous and with unhappy people. I escaped North Korea when I was 13 years old. Up until then, my life was a torture. North Korea is indescribable. No human but maybe that's not exactly what I will see. Just because of their first place. Maybe that's not exactly what they wanted me to see, I finally get to see the capital of North Korea, the city Pyongyang, it's a city that has 3 million inhabitants, Pyongyang means, space, flat, flat earth, because it's one of the few flat places here in North Korea. Most of the country is quite mountainous, so Pyongyang became famous for being a pretty flat city, and it became the capital. It does not belong to any state, it is independent. And I want to find out how people live here. I have seen few cars here through my window on the street, at night it was all blacked out, when I got home from the airport I couldn't see much because there was hardly any light. Well, my tour leaves in 33 minutes, I'll have breakfast and we'll get started. The view from my window, very beautiful and very modern here the center of Pyongyang, wide avenues, tall buildings. At night, they're all blacked out. At 10 o'clock at night they turn everything off, that hotel over there, it's a little spot, reminds me of the Shard, they started building it in 87, and never finished. But they say it's a hotel and there's a restaurant upstairs, I ask, may I visit, and they say, no, it's not ready yet. My window is pretty popped out, fully popped. I looked at the prices of the laundry here, and was finding them abusive, but I found out that they are in one, and each hundred is a dollar. I'll leave my pants washing, which are three dollars to wash, two to iron. I have a meeting tomorrow that I need pants for to respect to the leaders, the elevators in this hotel take forever. There are four, but to get down it takes about 10 to 15 minutes, three here and two here. Looking from here you can see that the world turns, life happens, there are people on the street, a car passing by, I even see more cars than I imagined. I thought I would see almost no cars or buses around Pyongyang, they have no trade relationship with the United States, so there aren't Fords or Chevrolets. There are some simpler cars that they produce themselves, and a lot of Chinese cars, you have to fight for your life, there are a lot of Chinese, this is the third floor of my hotel, where I go for breakfast, you can see that it's a hotel well made for tourists. There's a souvenir shop, there's a restaurant that I can't go into, it's only for Chinese people, my restaurant is that one, right there, next to the Air China shop, this is the hotel lobby, they love artificial flowers here. It's a trend, they always say that there are several restaurants here, Korean restaurant, family restaurant, but I can only use that one, always that one, there's only one table waiting for me, see, right here, just like yesterday, they just brought me an omelette, look how big the omelette is, tiny. My omelette is quite cold, and the tempura is too, they've been waiting here a long time. Because as soon as I knocked on the door, the girl said everything is here waiting for you, I asked for everything together. The bread that was also here, waiting for me, that looks toasty, right? But it must have been here for about three days, it's fancy, there's omelettes, tempura. Now the sausage has arrived, a sausage, milk, the coffee here is sweetened, I don't like sugar in coffee, although I love sweet, that's strange, isn't it? There's a little souvenir shop here on this other side too, across from the restaurants, and a fitness gym, maybe I'll never know what's in there. I hope I can get in one day. Let's go downstairs, my guide should be there waiting for me, only North Korea can make me punctual enough not to be a minute late, I arrive a minute early to everything, for God's sake, that's called fear. The first thing you need to understand, is that for North Koreans there is no, North Korea. Here they call themselves DPRK. The People's Democratic Republic of Korea. And to say, North Korea, to them may sound even a little disrespectful. North Korea really is quite impressive. Behind me is the library and study center. She was telling me that there are over 30 million books in here, that's right, 30 million books. 
Now travelers, whether it's 30 million, 300 million or 30, I'll never know, all I know is that I saw more than three books over there. Here too the presence of the leaders is everywhere, you see their pictures there in front of them is a very nice fountain, I think this is a national theater, and there is a department store, everybody has the same backpack. Travelers, we just crossed the street, she said you can't, you have to cross in the crosswalk, if any guard sees it, it could be bad, but we were fortunate. What a beautiful thing, my god in heaven I'm really surprised at the beauty of this city, this country. There's a lot of pretty stuff. And this street was built in 2012, my guide told me that there are many new things here. Tonight we're dining on a street made in 2017, it has several buildings. And you can't really tell if there are people in it or not, it has 2,500 flats that they made for people to live in, this was the first square that was made after the liberation of the Japanese, after 1945, when the Kim family liberated Korea from the Japanese, now we're going to go into the library, because apparently a North Korean is going to do a reading for us and show us what it's like inside all of this here, this wonderful building. Well, wait, wait, wait. Before we continue this video, I think it's good to understand that you can't go to North Korea alone, you have to hire the services of a company authorized by the North Korean government to take you around the country, that is, a company that will show you what they want you to see, you are not allowed to go anywhere you want. You can just go where they want to take you. Several tables, their pictures are everywhere, why they are showing this I have no idea. This is a little mermaid? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And, and this is Peter Pan. It's oh, it's Peter Pan, okay. Which one is this one? This is they are quite proud to show it here, the translated books, and clearly I've never heard of this lady queen here, people. This computer here is quite modern, Dell, LCD screen. And they can look up the volumes here, but there's no internet at all. And we'll continue this way, after seeing these classics. I feel more cultured. Now the beauty is really impressive, it's very beautiful, rich, chic stuff, this right here is the view from the second floor, they're very proud of this library, they say that the leader did it exactly so that everybody could get an education, because education is the foundation of the nation's future, I agree. Look how nice, they made sure to show me that they have books in Portuguese of pharmacy and telecommunications, the woman comes here and puts in a code and the book comes through that little hole, through a conveyor belt, and then it comes in that little box there. You never see them, I only know there's more than three. They have a library that you can look at and go into. You have these books here. The other one with 30 million, you can't go in. Just that woman who sees the books and gives them to you. So if you want a book it doesn't matter, you have to go there and talk to the woman. She will search among the 30 million copies and send it on that conveyor belt, the craziest thing is that it arrives the minute she asks for it. So you say, oh, I want that book, they asked for French, German, there were several, here you will find books in various languages, here you have international books in various languages. Oh, they have many sections, ah, okay, cool, it's pretty big here also. These books here were gifts from their first leader to the library from his personal collection. You see that it's not a crowded place, but the world is turning, life is happening. Two people here studying, another using the computer there. Let's look at the system here, Windows XP Professional, how fancy, but it is used only for search, you enter the name of the book and that's all. They have now brought us to a terrace in the library, where you can see this beautiful tower, which is the tower of their teachings, of their principles. I'll talk more about it soon, the architecture of the library is simply beautiful, and the view from up here gives an impression that the city is developed, modern. Picture of the leaders here, North Korean flag there, then there's a big square, the tower, some other buildings, very beautiful. Ah, this is the party flag, you can see that it's a very communist style flag, with the three pillars of the party that was founded in 1948, and here the flag of the Republic, of the DPRK, Democratic Republic of the People of Korea, in English, I was outside taking a photo and she said, be careful with the photo of the leaders so you don't cut them. They take great care with that, if you come here, you need to respect them, this is very important. Here there is a little shop with souvenirs, if you want to buy them. You know how it is, right? Traditional Korean stuff, like the happy piggy, the singing dog and the jumping bunny.
This here is the amusement complex, beautiful, super modern, very cool. Today is a Saturday, we came here in this place to bowl and I'm thinking where are the people in the middle of Saturday, having fun in a place that bowls, travelers, but modern, look, modern televisions, modern computers. It also has arcades, shooting games for you to play, a pool table, pretty cool, the decor is kind of 80s, I think. It's very 80s you can see by the carpets and such, but it's very Soviet Union style, very reminiscent of Russia and Ukraine, they gave me a shoe, this shoe is stuck, my son, by God, it's Korean number 42, and they didn't have a bigger one, the biggest is much bigger, and this one is like, too tight, but let's go, it's only 20 minutes of play, it was 2.50 euros for 20 minutes of play, look how big, there are about 30 lanes here. This child he keeps laughing and looking at me, he's the only one, everybody ignores the fact that I exist here. A funny thing about that day, my son, that I haven't told you. It's just that they called me to bowling and politely invited me to pay for the game on my tab. In other words, I'd have to pay her to play with me, yeah, that's exactly right. Soon after my guide called me to play, but I knew the catch so I said no. Da pegadinha, então eu recusei. You like bowling? Yeah, I like so much. Yeah. Here they do this thing very often, they show off entertainment, that people have fun, and they brought me to play too, that's our driver, and now at the end of the day I'm going to meet the group. It's my turn, ready, aim and go, that takes skill, bad 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 bad. Underneath the bowling lanes is an arcade area, go-karts, there is a paintball arena with guns here and you can play. Travelers, they have a room here with a virtual reality game, cool that they have that. They love ping pong too, there are ping pong tables in many places. Except for the Chinese and Russian embassies, all are in this region here, they said that the Brazilian embassy must be in the back, but I haven't seen it, but I know it is, thank you Brazil. One thing that's hard to understand is, that despite all this abundance shown to me by the North Koreans, and the dozens of restaurants I visited, the UN says that 40% of the people here don't have anything to eat. I don't know, it doesn't seem to make much sense. The story of the hot pot is really cool, they were telling me that at the time of the Koryo Kingdom, which was the prosperous kingdom here in Korea, there was a war where the Mongols invaded the Koryo Kingdom, and then the people had nothing to eat. So they used their helmets to cook, they would turn their helmets upside down and start cooking the meat in their helmets. Arriving here at the square. What is the square called? Kim Il Sung Square. Kim Il Sung Square. You can see that the square is spotless. But look how the sidewalk is not very well taken care of, I noticed that a lot here. This street here is the first smooth asphalt I've seen. These white dots that we are seeing are for training soldiers when there are official events, national events. Google it, it's called, Massive Dance, it's a gigantic thing. It's kind of like the Olympics here in North Korea, Art Gallery, Museum of Central History. You can see the Korean flag and the party flag with the symbols that I have already explained to you, and this is the bookstore that we were in, the library, the study center, this one here is the Ministry of Agriculture with a flag and next to it the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, then there is the Ministry of Education and that other one there is the Ministry of Commerce. One thing we noticed is that the city has a lot of space, it is clean, there is plenty of opportunity for people to have fun, do things, go here and there. But all of this here that we are seeing, are people from China, they are not people who live here, understand, I've had practically no contact with locals, I just saw a line of people getting water to drink, with gallons that look like gasoline, still in this square, she was telling me that this line is for when they have the massive dance that they do here, they go round and round, like the snail we do at school, they do here in this place, it goes in and out, in and out, and there's the Juche Tower, they chose to make this square exactly because in 1953 this is where the Victory Day Parade took place. They say that July 27, 1953 was Victory Day, that's where they won the war, but they actually signed a peace treaty and created the DMZ, which is to tell the people, we are victorious, everything worked out, let's go forward united. And then they made this huge square here. 
It has all the main events, I'm awestruck, travelers, and people come to take pictures here, those on my side are locals and these are Chinese. Exactly seven days ago I was in the capital of South Korea, the city of Seoul. Funny to think how a single country split into two such different parts. Seoul is a city that simply does not sleep, full of signs and lights, people on the streets, horns, noise. Its sister in the north has become a kind of quiet place, too quiet, and I would even say a bit melancholic. Now I've arrived at a museum of the Korean War. They made a great museum, they won't allow me to take pictures or film inside so I won't be able to show you around. In fact, you cannot enter with anything, backpack, only with your cell phone, and you cannot even use it, it has to stay in your pocket, guarded all the time, here is the map of the museum. On the right side is all the weaponry, and a ship they captured from the Americans, the USS Pueblo will be on that side, and on the left side are the Korean weapons used in the war and stuff. A gun that shot planes, look how crazy, they captured all this. That's so scary. A helicopter that was captured after the end of the Korean War in 1963, there is even a photo of the two surrendered Americans here. She said that after the Americans apologized, they returned the prisoners alive. Travelers, I'm entering the Korean War Museum, what's the chance I'll shit myself? I am sweating so much, there are military around me. I just left this museum and I am drooling, I didn't expect it. This museum here, my son, is Disney for war buffs, you know what I mean, super production, something like that. So well done, I'm amazed, it was very wonderful for you to understand the story as well, there's a Korean wedding going on. And the bride gets married in yellow and the one in pink is the maid of honor, the bridesmaid looks more beautiful than the bride, there, I said it. Wow, we're arriving here at the USS Pueblo, I think it's one of the most epic captures of this museum. One of the ones they're most proud of. It was captured in 1968, it was an American espionage ship, but look, they put that sign there to pretend it was a civilian ship, and nobody would suspect it. But the North Koreans got it, my son. You can see the espionage confessions the Americans had to write to the Koreans so they could be released, but they were only released after the president wrote a letter formalizing that it really was the spy ship. The spy room, travelers, look at the craziest thing, here the Americans spied on everything that happened in North Korea. Now I have come to of their main department stores, or the main one that they show to those who come to visit, right? It has four floors and I cannot film anything, I'll get some pictures on the internet to illustrate for you. That market here was crazy, I found out that the money they give us that they say is local money, is not really local money. I noticed that the locals were using a special stamped money, like a validity seal, I think that money is official. The money we were using, on the other hand, looked like some kind of real estate banking thing. I just left, look what I bought, a lot of North Korean food, I don't know if I will eat this at the hotel, as I record a video, I could do some North Korean unpacking, like I did in Japan with Mara Maderos. Imagine me and Mara Maderos stuffing ourselves with North Korean food. I don't know if I can take this back to Brazil, I don't know if I can handle it. Do you know how much I paid for all this here, about 12 reais for all this here, I'll show you later. I just arrived at the Party Foundation Monument, that circle they made around the three pillars is to represent the unity of the people. We can get in here and see it from below. The grandeur of this place, it's really big, it's about 50 meters high. Each symbol represents a pillar here of their republic. The hammer represents the workers, the brush represents the intellectuals, and the sickle represents the field workers. Three pillars that tell the story of the people, of the anti-Japanese revolution, which is when their republic movement began. Here their unity, that they are a very united people with a joint heart, and here it shows that they want to save the world with this new revolutionary movement. One curiosity that many people have is whether North Koreans are allowed to leave the country even on vacation, to go sightseeing, to see a new place, and clearly I took this question to my guides. And the answer was exactly the same. They can go but it's expensive, the world out there is very expensive, why should I leave? Soon after I asked if they had passports, and the answer was that there was no point in having passports if they don't even intend to leave the country.
I went even deeper and asked, have you ever been on a plane? My guide smiled and said that last year she made her first plane flight, she said she was scared to death, but that it was a wonderful feeling to get on a plane and arrive in another city. But easy, that flight was within the country. I asked if she was happy. She told me she was, it's kind of hard to know, right, is she really happy because she doesn't know that there's something out here that could be cooler for her? Or did she only tell me this because, like me, she was also being watched? <laughs> Look where I am, in the North Korean circus show, they were dying to show to me. I did what? Option A, no one died. Option B, I'm here doing this vlog. Oh my son, I want to talk to you about that circus, I think it was the worst money spent in my entire life, I paid 91 reals, yes, exactly 91 reals to see this show that back in Campinas, in the Tacoral Park, I would have paid about 20. But anyway, there was experience, the guide told me that a friend of hers went to the US, to the United States and found it absurd to have to pay so much for things. She said that housing was expensive, food was expensive, and that later she was invited back when her father's diplomatic work ended. I questioned if she wanted to go back, my guide said that she believed she did, why wouldn't someone want to go back to North Korea? Look there travelers, there is interaction from the audience, oh people, don't kill this man, he's so nice, look, he's running away not to be executed because he made a mistake, just kidding travelers, it's being really cool, really fun, look how there are locals in the circus. These people here, all in black, they only see their heads. They are all North Koreans, you can tell because they are all in black wearing a brooch. Look at this colorful audience, my son, colorful, my goodness, well a lot of different clothes, bye, I'm going to eat because I'm starving, kiss. And a fact that bugged my mind is that while they were talking about how the communist system is perfect and that nobody needed any extra penny because the government provided everything, all the time they were asking me for a tip. I said, I can tip yes, and the guide looked at me when I took a 50 and said, um, I said, a, he said, um, I took a 100, he said, I think it's okay. I said, that's what it's going to be because that's what I have, and handed it over. Look, the value suggested in the trip is that you give about 15 euros per day. 15 euros per day in 5 days of travel would give more or less 75 euros, which is equivalent to 350 reals. They say that the average salary of a North Korean is 600 reals per year. I didn't misspeak, 600 reals per year. They have to live with this money that the government gives, but they say this money is enough because the government provides everything, housing, education, even school supplies. So this money is only for extra expenses, which in fact would not be so necessary. Now tell me, with that kind of money, who can travel? We just had dinner on a street called Future Street. It's been I think four years since they started building, and they built so that teachers, intellectuals and scientists, had a very cool and modern place to live, in fact it's beautiful, look, I'm impacted by this place, really beautiful, look at this building here, how modern. That one there too, but I notice the same thing I notice in every building, one floor or another that's lit, here too, you see that you have these lit floors, the others are off. Here we are. Another crowded restaurant. I really wish I could have taken a picture in this huge, wonderful hotel, which in fact was never finished. But my guide said there would be nowhere to stop, even though there were no cars on the street, practically, and they could stop in front of the hotel to take a picture, he said no, that it would be very complicated due to the traffic. I insisted once and said, gee, there's no way we can go there quickly, in 5 seconds I'll take a picture in that hotel and we'll be on our way. His happy, smiling countenance was nullified. He got pretty serious, you know? And he said no, that we would follow the tour as planned, and I clearly did not insist, I sat on my stool and kept looking out the window. This here is the hotel hall, the hotel when it's 11 o'clock, in 10 minutes, it's going to close everything, everything shuts down, my son, everything, everything, everything. There is Chinese time and local time, and the receptionists don't speak any English, the guide has to translate everything. Outside there is a pool and a spa too, the pool is $5 to use and the spa $20 a massage, travelers, who would say, two Brazilians on the same trip, a toast to this, I can't believe that in North Korea I would find two Brazilians. There are several little shops here in the hotel, people are very nice, very sweet here, I just arrived at the hotel, travelers, it's such a relief when I walk in here that you have no idea. 15 people have now arrived and it gives you a relief to see other foreigners.
New Zealanders, I said, you're from my planet, thank you. They tidied up my room, it's looking really nice, the laundry room also I washed some pants, they've just been washed. I want to show you what I bought at the market. I'll show you in the little video the market here in Korea, tomorrow will be the main day of the trip, I'm going to sleep because I want to see everything in North Korea and show it to you, I'm going to have breakfast and I don't think I'll be alone today. Hello girls. Morning. Hey morning. The view at dawn, all very cloudy. Little by little, the city is waking up. A person on a bicycle in the street, it is now exactly 7.10 in the morning. Arriving here, the little room that I always had coffee alone was the one, but I have friends, they are from the UK, Mijas Amiguinas. But since it's 7 in the morning, I'm not going to put the camera in their faces, right? But they are pretty cute, look, as changed, good morning guys. Travelers, look how different, so much food, it doesn't even look like the breakfast I was having here yesterday. And then there's the music on too, to set the mood, they say that this band is very famous here, and the flowers, this trend can't be missed here. I woke up here in North Korea, and as the days go by, the tension eases, you know? I think that country that seemed like a seven-headed bug, maybe it's a three-headed bug, today I was able to have coffee with friends and it was really nice to talk a little. I think coming here alone is to ask for a more introspective and profound journey than usual, which also there's nothing wrong with that, I kind of liked it. But, little by little, you get crazy. We get used to this loneliness, this lack of contact with people, and for me this is not good at all. Look, travelers, it was 8 o'clock in the morning, and I was actually very surprised to see that the streets were not packed with people at all. For a capital of 3 million inhabitants, I kept wondering where these people were. If you take a city like Amsterdam, for example, which is a capital city that has only 700,000, about one quarter of the population of Pyongyang, you will all the time see people on the street. You go all the time. Cars, bicycles, movement, even Campinas. The city where I come from, which has a little over a million inhabitants, is extremely busier than Pyongyang. Could it be that people don't like going through the center and prefer to stay on the outskirts of town? I'll leave it to you to answer that question. We're going to Kimsusan Palace now. That we go to see the leaders, they are lying there today, since they died. So, the, in that place, that was the old... One passed away in 1994, the other in 2001. I can't film anything, I'll have to put my cell phone in a plastic bag. Look there, and people who come to visit here, they have to come in an extremely formal way. The men wear this attire, which is a very Soviet attire. And the women wear this typical Korean outfit, I think it's beautiful. And this one, travelers, this one is the tomb where the grandfather and father of their current leader Kim Jong-un are. But I am without having live viewers, today no better, they come. I just went in there and I couldn't film anything, they search you whole, if you have a smart watch, they see if you're wearing anything metal, you have to empty everything, you can't carry a pin in your pocket. A surreal, surreal thing, I've never been through anything like it. Look how impeccable the garden is, I don't know if you can see it so perfectly, it's kind of against the sun, but the flowers, the grass is perfectly cut, all very sumptuous here. It is right here that the leaders are resting eternally, and when I say they are resting, it's not a statue, or a picture, it's them. That's what you're thinking. They took the first leader, who passed away in 1994, Kim Il-sung, and then the second leader, who is his son, who is Kim Jong-il, and embalmed the bodies and left them on display so that the North Korean people never forget their leaders, and so that the leaders are always close to the people. Unfortunately, camera, cell phone, everything is confiscated before you step inside. There's this giant conveyor belt, you can't walk. You just have to let the treadmill take you. Arriving there I was affected. I've never seen anything not sumptuous before. So big, it was a maximum security business, maximum sanitization, and hundreds of people going to visit the leaders. You will also see the bodies of the leaders, and you will have to bow four times, once on each side of the tomb. That's for every leader. Then you also have a train car where one of the leaders died. Another train car, where the other leader was traveling, and a lot of information about them, a lot of it. As I walked through the corridors, I kept thinking about the fortune that went into creating that, to make a mausoleum like that. They said it cost about $100,000, but some institutions say it was something like 900 million. That's right, almost a billion dollars to do that. You can see that, indeed, they are rich and powerful. But couldn't all that money have been used for, I don't know, something else? 
Well, I'm Brazilian, so I think I understand a little bit about this subject. I wanted to say that at some points I felt like I was at Disney. It seems like such a surreal thing, I felt like I was entering a parallel world, for me to visit, vacation and return. But no, that was all real. This was all happening, look at the immensity of this place, look at the size of the man in the statue. It's just surreal here. Until 2011, there was only one statue, after the leader passed away, they made a second statue. They export these statues to countries in Africa that they have trade with. They make huge statues like that, and notice the synchrony, it's exactly aligned with the monument of the three pillars, right, the founding of the party, and it has this straight line, very beautiful. Those people there represent the anti-Japanese revolution, because Kim, who is the leader, was responsible for liberating the North Koreans from the Japanese in 1945. I went back to the main square. These are examples of photos they let you take with this tower here, that I told you about, now they brought us to an international bookstore, to show that they have books translated into several languages. Tuned in guys, the newspapers, hey, they told me I couldn't fold newspapers, but these are folded. You can buy a pin here if you want, but it's never the official pin. The official pin is only for actual North Koreans. This is one of the official flowers here in the country, you can also take advantage and buy a CD, a DVD, various novelties here. These here are the posters from the advertisement that you can buy. But you can't fold them, you have to roll them in a straw and take them, and if you fold them, you know what happens to you, they're in that international bookshop. It's all very simple, you know? It was nice, it's curious, but in fact not very impressive. I was happy to see the children playing in the park, for the first time I saw children having fun and, in short, children, being children. At some points I could really see that apparently they live, shop, go to school, go to the park they seem like happy people. Some of them actually look like happy people. Some things that few people know about North Korea are that here you cannot go anywhere you want. If you want to take a picture it is always good to ask. A guide will accompany you 24 hours a day. He will not sleep with you. You can do it yourself. But from the minute you wake up until the minute you sleep, he'll be watching you and guides have to be respected at all times. Yes, you cannot, for example, fold a newspaper that has a picture of the leader. You can't bend a poster that has a picture of the leader or even disrespect a statue by taking an off-centered picture, or a picture that cuts off the leader's head or foot or hand. Every time we are on the street, I look at the streets and I wonder, where are the cars? Before I came here, I read that here in North Korea there's only one car for every thousand people, and that nobody can own their own car. Only the government can gift you with a car. So if you're a very famous artist, a very prominent athlete, a very smart scientist, maybe the government will give you a car, maybe, but you can't just take it, save money, work hard and buy it, because from what they told me, public transportation is enough for the population to get around, to go about their daily business, there's a slight blackout here in the restaurant, travelers, it happens here a lot, one crazy thing they love here is also rice soup, everywhere has rice soup, which is the broth of rice, our lunch will be cold noodles, which is a very typical dish here in North Korea, it has the right way to eat, put mustard, put some spices, stir everything. Everybody's eating cold noodles here, look how crazy. I'm recording a video showing how to eat cold noodles here. And here we have another little shop, more of the same. They're two for buying a North Korean soccer jersey but I want to see where they use it. This here is the Arc de Triomphe. He is considered the largest in the world. It's actually one meter longer than the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. Reaching a height of 60 meters. It was made on the leader's birthday in 1982 to commemorate the liberation of North Korea, which was under Japanese rule. It has 70 azaleas around the arch, which symbolized 70 years since the birth of the first president, the eternal president of the country, 20 wands, 10 reals to enter. You can have a beautiful view of the mural of when he made his speech in 1945, Kim Il-sung, who was the first president, people playing tennis, a very active crowd here. And quite a beautiful street here, travelers. That's the biggest stadium in the world with over 100,000 seats. Clearly, I am can't tell, but I think it does, it's huge looking from here. Pyongyang looks like a city from the future, look at this, they are to be congratulated, you can see quite a contrast from the left side to the right side.
Funny thing travelers, you have moments like that. I forget I'm in North Korea, it's so peaceful. I just arrived at Juche Tower, when they founded the country he said that Juche is a man responsible for everything he does, I think that's true because we are responsible for our actions and their consequences. The tower is 170 meters high, with the torch alone being 20 meters. Then her viewpoint, the end of it, the top of it, is 150 meters. Boy travelers, I just love this central square and felt a peace, you know. It's such an impeccably beautiful place. You don't see a piece of paper on the floor, but you also don't see people, you know? That makes for a little sadness. I went to take some pictures, my guide was super cute, she even said, stay here, I'll take some pictures of you. That place is cool. But soon after she took my cell phone to see the photos and deleted several, because I was cutting a little bit, a little bit of the image of the leader that was there in the background, kind of crazy, right? Now they brought us to taste a beer, to visit a local brewery, I got to know a lot of restaurants. That they told me were local restaurants, but I never saw any locals eating there, after much questioning. After much asking, they told me that the restaurants were from the state company, that the restaurants in fact were for tourists to know Korean cuisine, and have a little more space and privacy. Well, each one can understand it there as you wish. When I came to North Korea, I was full of doubts and my head was pounding, now I leave this country full of questions, was everything I saw and experienced real? Are people, in fact, happy? Are these people really well off? Is the system of government good for everybody? Or is it because they don't know another system, in practice? Don't miss it at all, I share with you these doubts, and I leave it to you to tell me what you think. All I ask is that you please never judge the inhabitant of a country or condemn anyone you saw in that video, for a different form of government than ours. Nobody chooses where they're born. If you were born free, that choice was never yours either. I can say I've made friends, or maybe colleagues. I felt fear, I felt power, money, and homesickness, lots of homesickness. But I think of all the things I've learned in this country, being free, is without a doubt the greatest gift I could ever have. Always give thanks for your freedom. That is why every day, without exception, I give thanks for being free.